Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and we are going to work through our second problem here for calorimetry. This simulation was developed by Iowa State and for real, you need to check out that school simply for these chemistry simulations. Like they are phenomenal. I'm probably going to quit teaching and just go back to school at Iowa State so that I can mess with these animations all the time. Okay, so let's dive into problem number two here. It says we have a 120 gram sample of gold at 401 Kelvin, and it's placed in a coffee cup calorimeter containing 50 milliliters of water at 301 Kelvin. Determine the final temperature of the water. Okay, we also are making an assumption here that we lose no heat to the surroundings or calorimeter for that matter and the specific heat capacity of gold is 0.128 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so for this problem, I'm gonna make that assumption that the Q or heat that is absorbed by the water is equal to the heat released by the gold. Again, it's important to remember that the signs that we have here are simply indicating whether the heat is being absorbed or it's being released. And I know before I begin this problem that the water is going to absorb heat energy and the gold is going to release heat energy because the gold is starting at the higher temperature. And remember, heat flows from the hotter object to the cooler object. So now I'm just gonna expand my Q into the MC delta T formula. Mass times the heat times final temperature minus initial temperature. I'm gonna set this equal to the negative of the mass of the gold times the gold times the delta T of gold, or T final minus T initial. Now it's simply a matter of plugging in your numbers and chugging away on the calculator. The mass of water is 50 grams. Now, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, Boylan, it says milliliters in the problem. You would be correct. However, we have to remember that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So if I had 50 milliliters of water, I have 50 grams of water. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And again, that is something that you just need to commit to memory, or if you use this simulation, it's given to you right there. Okay, now I'm going to be looking for the final temperature here. My initial temperature of the water bath is 301 Kelvin, or 28 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna set that equal to the negative of the mass of the gold, which is 120 grams, times the specific heat of gold, which I am told is 0 0.128. Now, a quick side note here, if you're ever working a problem on a test and you're not asked to solve for specific heat, you'll be given specific heat in the problem. But if you are working a homework problem or a quest problem and you're not given the specific heat of the metal, you can just look it up on the magical World Wide Web, the internet. Now, here's an important thing to keep in mind. My final temperature of the gold is also gonna be X. I can use the same variable because remember, when you have two objects that are different temperatures and you put them in contact with one another, eventually they will reach thermal equilibrium or the temperatures will equilibrate they will have the same temperature. However, we are starting out at a temperature of 401 Kelvin or 128 degrees Celsius. Now, something to keep in mind, you don't actually have to convert the Kelvin to Celsius because a degree Celsius and a Kelvin are the same magnitude. And because we're talking about changes in temperature, you don't actually have to switch it over to degrees Celsius. However, if you're confused by that, just convert to Celsius. You won't get the wrong answer that way. Okay, now it's time for some calculator fun and algebra fun all at the same time. I'm first gonna multiply these two together. Times 4.18. We get 209 joules per degree Celsius. My unit of grams will have canceled out. Times X minus 28 degrees Celsius equals, again, I'm gonna multiply the mass and specific heat of my gold together. 120 times 0.128, enter 15. 0.36 joules per degree Celsius times X minus 128 degrees Celsius. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute this throughout my parentheses on either side. So I get 209 
X. And I'm gonna drop my units just for clarity here. Minus 209 times 28, enter. 5,852 equals negative 15.36 X minus 1,966.08. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just distribute this negative throughout this parentheses. So we're gonna end up with negative 15.36x plus 1,966.08. I'm gonna combine my like terms here. So I'm gonna add 15.36 to each side of the equation. 209 plus 15.36, enter. So we get 224.36 x minus 5,852 equals 1,966.08. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 5,852 to each side. So what happened right this Plus 5852, enter. So we've got 224.36x equals 7,818.08. Now to solve for X, I'm just gonna divide each side by 224.36. X equals 34.8 degrees Celsius. Boom. Okay, now before we finish, uh, what I really like about this simulation is you can then check your work to see whether or not you did it correctly. So we're gonna start this sucker. I'm so excited. Like I could just sit here on a Friday night and drop metals into calorimeters and see what happens to the temperature. Oh my gosh, we're getting, could it go all the way to 34.8? Please, please, please. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, oh my goodness, we are correct. Problem number two, done.